Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology's virtual graduation ceremony. I'm so glad that you could be here in this difficult and trying time. I know the end of the semester has been very unusual and pretty crazy for all of you, but you've done it. You're graduating. Congratulations. I'm Dean Bowers. I'm the chair of the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology, and I'm so happy you could all be here. I'd like to thank all of you for attending this virtual graduation ceremony. And I'd also like to thank your family and friends who've been able to attend as well. Finally, I'd like to thank the faculty and staff who helped make this virtual graduation ceremony possible. So what I'd like to do today is tell you a little bit about what I'm going to be doing in this ceremony and organize it so that you have a little bit of a sense of what's going to be going on. So the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology is a big one, um, and all of us would like to welcome you to this wonderful graduation. We have, um, the organization of the ceremony is going to be as follows, I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction to the department, and then I'm going to introduce Michael Breed, our seminar speaker today. Um, after his talk, we'll give out some graduate student teaching awards, recognize some of our honor students. We often have some PhD students who also would be attending, and master students, but they're not um, going to be here today. And then we'll have the conferral of degrees. At the end of this ceremony are a series of messages from our faculty congratulating all of you for completing your degree in this really wild year. So the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology is a large one. As I said, we have 34 faculty and um, about and five instructors and eight lecturers. And we uh, have about 900 undergraduate majors and minors. So what does the department do? The department uh, studies everything you can imagine about the natural world. And we study them in some really beautiful places. Colorado is an incredible place to do research in ecology and evolutionary biology, but the research that our department does spans the entire globe. So we do a lot of work that occurs here in Colorado, but we also do work on every continent in the world. We have people working in Antarctica, South and Central America, Africa, Europe and truly around the world. And we study many different aspects of the organisms that inhabit the natural world. So the goals of this department are to bring cutting edge research and the techniques used to conduct that research to our students, to train you, the next generation of biologists, in how to be the most informed citizens and best biologists that you can possibly be. And the research that goes on in this department runs the gamut from genes and genomes to the study of individual species, and not just the species themselves, but their ecology, their evolution, their behavior, but also their interactions with other groups of organisms. We're also interested in the ecology and evolution of populations and communities of organisms and how these populations and communities interact. At a larger scale, we're interested in the structure and function of ecosystems. How do all these different species interact with each other? And as I said, the research that we do is truly global with research programs going on around the world. So to sum it all up, we view the Department of Ecology and Evolution as one that's truly interdisciplinary, integrative, and innovative. 
and we work at the levels from the microscopic to the entire globe. And so what we want to do is inform you, and what we hope we've done is inform you, the next generation, about the ecology and evolution of our planet and how best you can take care of that planet. And so what we're doing is trying to prepare you, the next generation, for the next generation. And we hope that you'll be able to bring the skills that you've learned here in the Department of Ecology and Evolution to the paths that you're going to follow in the next years of your life. So thank you very much for being here, and we really appreciate your attending this virtual graduation. So what I'd like to do now is introduce our uh, commencement speaker, uh, Professor Emeritus Mike Breed. So Mike's been a member of the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology since 1977. So he's been here for 43 years and he just recently retired. And his research is in the area of the behavior, ecology, and evolution of social insects. He's had an immense influence on thousands of students who've studied here at CU, and his special um, courses that he's taught, are most notably, is a very popular course in animal behavior, although he's taught a variety of other courses as well. His teaching's been recognized by a number of different awards here at CU. And as I said, he's interested in the behavior and ecology of social insects, especially bees and ants. And he's published a number of hundreds of papers and a number of textbooks, including a very popular textbook in animal behavior. His research has been recognized by his being elected as a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the Animal Behavior Society, and also the Entomological Society of America. Mike's also done extensive surf service here at the university. He's actually been the chair of three different departments. He was the chair of the Department of Ecology and Evolution when I joined it, but he also served um, in an interim capacity as chairs of two other departments here on campus. And one of the hallmarks of, of Mike's time here at CU is that he always makes time. He, um, for example, takes all of our new faculty and some of our more seasoned faculty out to lunch. He recommends lunch as an important component of your day. He takes the time to advise his colleagues and students and takes the time to remind us of what's important. He's been an outstanding researcher and a prolific writer, and I'm delighted to introduce him as the commencement speaker for this year's virtual graduation. Introducing Professor Mike Breed. Welcome and greetings. I am so glad to see you here at the virtual eBio Spring 2020 commencement. My name is Michael Breed and I'm a retired faculty member in eBio. 2019 was my last year here at CU and it was a long and really wonderful journey for me teaching uh, at this great university. I'm sure it's been a great journey for you as well, getting from wherever you started to where you're sitting today. So today is about you, our graduates, and congratulations. Uh, these are unusual circumstances to say the least. I'm speaking to you from the comfort of my living room rather than in a large auditorium somewhere on campus. But I'm so glad to be able to join you in celebrating your accomplishments. This is a good moment, I think, to reflect both on the past and on the future. The road for me has been pretty straightforward, I'd have to say. I went directly from college to graduate school, then directly from graduate school to CU. Uh, so I'm sure that not all of you will have such linear routes to your lives, but I sincerely hope that whatever twists and turns you face, that your lives will be happy and fulfilling. If you're looking for themes in what I have to say today, I'm going to talk about roads, faith, and possibility. 
uh, you, and I'm talking specifically about the cohorts of students represented in this room, have been my absolute favorite students in all my time at CU. While I know a few of you individually, I very much know in a collective sense that you are first and foremost good people. To me this means being modest, kind, respectful, and generous. If I were to create a stereotype for your generation, that is who you are and you are a delight to be around. And I really think it's important that you know that. If we were at an in-person graduation, now would be the moment when I would congratulate your parents on raising such awesome kids, and I would ask family and friends in attendance to applaud your accomplishments. So let's imagine that moment, and please do accept the best wishes of your friends and family. But, even though you are wonderful, I have some advice for you as you make your way in life. First, think of the great friends you've made here at CU. Have faith in your, them as your fellow travelers in the road of life. So while you're imagining your friends, let me suggest that in life, you should learn to love your friends for their faults, because you definitely expect you, them to love you in spite of yours. Over time, you and your friends will change, grow and mature as you progress on life's road. Embrace that change. Don't expect your relationships to remain frozen in time and appreciate your friends not only for the people they were while you were here at CU, but for the people they are becoming and the people that they will become in the future. Coming back to the subject of faith, I urge you to have faith in yourself. Have faith in humanity, but more relevant than anything else on your graduation day, have faith in your ability to have a positive influence on your world. My road started in Kansas, and another Kansan, Dwight Eisenhower, was president during my grade school years. His farewell address, given in 1961, was one of the greatest speeches of the 20th century. In that speech, he cautioned, and these are his words, as we peer into society's future, we, you and I, and our government must avoid the impulse to live only for today, plundering for our own ease and convenience the precious resources of tomorrow. My generation, the boomers, has not left this world in as good shape as we would have hoped and expected. The world proved to be a more complex and challenging place than I or anyone else in my generation anticipated in the 1960s. I would also say that while many of my generation were idealists, we did not understand that trying our best individually to live up to our ideals would not be enough to overcome those among us who were motivated by greed and the desire for power. I very much hope that you both will live up to your values and also will find a way to prevail over those who would, in Eisenhower's words, plunder the most precious resources of tomorrow. Even in the 1960s, we knew that the greenhouse effect was real. We knew that accelerating rates of extinction would have crushing consequences. If you heard a little background noise there, that was my cat wanting dinner. Sorry about that. Uh, we knew that the imprudent release of toxins into the environment would harm the welfare of the Earth's biota, including humans. These problems and so many others persist. So Eisenhower sets the stage for us but I want to step back and just take a, for a moment here, just take a walk around campus. I have pictures of some of my treasured places, which I hope will spark fond memories for you. For fun, I'll show each of these for a few seconds so you can see if you can recall the location, then I'll let you know where it is.
A favorite spot for many, perhaps most of you, is the statue of the poet Robert Frost next to Old Main. I've seen you sit on the bench next to him, hug him, take selfies with him. It's a great comp contemplative spot that you should take your friends and family with you the next time you're on campus, which I hope will be soon. Going back to the point we started with, uh, with Eisenhower, at roughly the same time that he gave that famous speech, the great environmentalist Rachel Carson wrote in her 1962 book, Silent Spring, um, about these concerns. She said, We stand now where two roads diverge, but unlike ro the roads in Robert Frost's familiar poem, they are not equally fair. In Robert, um, uh, the road we have long been traveling is deceptively easy, a smooth superhighway on which we progress with great speed, but at its end lies disaster. The other fork of the road, the one less traveled by, offers our last, our only chance to reach a destination that assures the preservation of the earth. It will remain a mystery for the ages why what was so obvious to our leaders and to scientists in the early 1960s has been so difficult to ex execute. But we can acknowledge also that it is not too late that we can still take the path that will avoid disaster and the challenge lies with your generation to find that path. On the bright side, there have been real successes for which my generation should take credit. America's symbol, the bald eagle, has made a magnificent comeback due to our reduction of the use of chlorinated hydrocarbons as insecticides. The ozone hole, while still with us, is much smaller than it would have been without international science-based action. Vast landscapes in America and abroad have been brought under conservation protection. Through immunization, most of the devastating major diseases of childhood, which dreadfully impacted many in my generation, polio, measles, mumps, chickenpox, pertussis, and rubella, are held at bay in the developed world and are the target of continuing campaigns globally. Immunization and other science-based approaches can bring the, bring the virus that is currently challenging us to bay as well. So there is hope. But there is much that remains to be done, not just with the current crisis, but in many issues that face humanity. And it falls on the next generations of scientists to improve the welfare of all people and indeed of the biosphere and all of its residents. You have learned here at CU how to think like a scientist. Don't undervalue this. Your abilities mean there is true hope for the future. Let me affirm that, as eBio graduates, you can assimilate information and objectively analyze it. You know how to form hypotheses, and you can test those hypotheses. You are probably a hopeless nerd. As an eBio major, you have acquired all the tools needed to be an extraordinarily successful scientist. The next step is to apply these abilities in the larger world. You may stay in science, you may move on to other endeavors, but at your heart, your training here will always enable you to think as a scientist. You will face and, for the sake of humanity, conquer the challenges that my generation has left behind. As Dr. Martin Luther King said, the road ahead is not altogether a smooth one. There are no broad highways that lead us easily and inevitably to quick solutions. But you have the tools to find the solutions, and that, of course, is exactly why you went to college. Let's return to reflecting about our families for a minute. As you think about the future, I'm going to give you one important specific requirement. My valued colleague, Jeff Mitten, gave the graduation talk here several times. He always included the instruction. So here you go. Don't forget to call home. You will wander roads far 
in both geographic and intellectual distance, but likely you will always have a phone, so call home. Today represents a sunset of sorts, the, one, the end of one step in your life. For our graduates, it is also a sunrise, the beginning of a new, exciting, and challenging phase. But in a photograph, it's often hard to tell if you're looking at a sunrise or a sunset. And just as a personal aside, when I was in college, I thought the correct way to see a sunrise was at the end of a good night out on the way home. Later in life, you may find yourself getting up at sunrise to go to work, but trust me, that's not the best way to see a sunrise. Not to press the metaphor too hard, but do appreciate that beginnings and endings merge together and that new opportunity arises out of the past. Let's come back to my point about faith. I ask you to keep your faith in the future and your ability to adapt. The poet Maya Angelou tells us, each of us has the right and the responsibility to assess the roads which lie ahead and those over which we have traveled. And if the future road looms ominous or unpromising, then we need to gather our resolve, step off that road and into another direction. So finally, I'm going to end with a thought from John Krakauer from his book, Into the Wild. This is about leaving, as today you are leaving a phase of your lives. I was surprised, as always, by how easy the act of leaving was and how good it felt. The road was suddenly rich with possibility. And for you, so it is, a world rich with possibility. Congratulations again, and I hope your road in life is long, happy, and productive. Thank you so much, Mike. That was a really great address. I really appreciate you doing that. And so what I'd like to do now is introduce the next generation, you, the students who are finishing up this semester. And the next generation, we have several different things that we'd like to do here. First, we'd like to recognize several of our wonderful teaching assistants and give some awards for outstanding performance of some of our junior members of the department. Um, first is the award for teaching in general biology. And this award goes to Krista Torrens, who's actually a graduate student in environmental studies. We have a number of students in eBio who are being recognized for their excellence in teaching in a number of our different courses. These are graduate students who teach the labs in many of our courses, and I'm sure that you all recognize many of the names that are up here. Finally, um, Prof Professor Emeritus, Emeritus Mel Cundiff and his wife Sharon have been endowed an award that goes to the uh, juniors in the department with the highest GPAs. And so they'll be getting a check in the mail. And these uh, four students were tied for the highest GPA, all of them having a 4.0. So congratulations to all of you. Unfortunately, Mel couldn't be here to congratulate you virtually, but I hope that you'll reach out to him and say thank you and I'll be happy to provide that information to you if you'd like it. I'd also like to introduce a number of undergraduates who took the time and put the effort into doing an honors thesis. So an honors thesis is an independent research project, and these are of many different kinds. And these students work really hard. They have to defend their honors thesis. And they receive a ranking of their honors thesis combined with their GPA, which determines the level of honors that they're going to receive. So there's summa cum laude at the top, ed magna cum laude, and cum laude. And all of these students have worked incredibly hard 
to produce these honor theses. And we've asked each one of these um, honor students and five of them were able to do this to prepare a slide that just summarizes their research. So first, Johanna Beam, who was an honor student in Professor Scott Taylor's lab, working on um, meadowlarks and the differences between species of meadowlarks. Next, Catherine Feldman, who also worked in the lab of Scott Taylor, and she looked at plumage coloration in uh, chickadees. Kevin Hedrick worked in the lab of Barbara Demig Adams, looking at how caterpillar herbivory on an invasive weed switchgrass might help to produce a, a better biofuel crop. Michaela Seaver worked with Katie Suiting, looking at how the presence of shrubs in the alpine might influence flowering time of alpine plant communities. Sage Madden was advised by Professor Rebecca Safran, and she looked at the effect of parental provisioning by barn swallow parents on the success of their offspring. And then we had two other honor students, Christopher Griganis and Stein Skalmerud, who also wrote honor theses and are graduating with honors. So congratulations to all of these people. And congratulations to the class of 2020. Hey everyone, I'd just like to thank my family, Lisa, Jim, AJ, Nick, Stanley, and Charlotte. Uh, I just want to thank you for all the love and support you've given me these past four years. Also, uh, future plans involve something within medicine, so we'll see what that looks like uh, once I graduate and everything settles down with all this craziness. And also, uh, see you. Thanks for a great time. Um, and just go buffs. I want to thank my parents, my sisters, and my friends for helping me through this whole undergrad process and supporting me. Um, especially through the transition between going from St. Olaf College to here at CU and the Taylor Lab for taking on my honors thesis project and mentoring me through that whole process. I have learned a lot thanks to you guys and now I'm really inspired to go to grad school and get my PhD in eBio and then become a professor and teach at the university level. Um, CU has given me lots of great opportunities that I didn't have before, and I am forever grateful uh, for the education that I've been able to get here and the people and connections I've been able to make. So thank you, CU. Hey, fellow 2020 graduates, my name is Callie, and I just want to say thank you to my family and my friends for the past four years and all of the unforgettable experiences I've had here at CU. Um, I wish all of you the best of luck and can't wait for the future. Skill buffs. Hi, I'm Maddie. I'm graduating with a eBio major and a Spanish minor. I'd like to thank my parents, my grandparents, my sister Chelsea, and my boyfriend Cree. I definitely couldn't have gotten here without all of their love and support over the past four years. For me, my CU education has been really valuable in helping me get to my career goals. Next year, um, I will be attending the CU Pharmacy School at the Anschutz Medical Campus, which I'm really excited about. Um, and going to CU Boulder has been a really valuable part of my journey, and I'm definitely going to miss it. Go Buffs! Thank you, Mom and Dad, for all of your support and guidance. Christy McCain for helping me get my hands dirty doing research. Scott Taylor, Catherine Gravenstein, and the rest of the Taylor Lab for providing me support and guidance throughout my honors thesis journey. And of course, Nathan, Claire, and all of my other friends who have inspired and motivated me along the way. Hi, my name is Brittany LaFond, a fellow eBio graduate. I'd like to take this time to thank all of my family as well as my friends for being so supportive during my time here at CU. I couldn't have done it without you. I'd also like to thank the eBio department for really providing ample research opportunities for me to pursue in order to figure out where exactly I fit into that world of biology. I'd also like to thank my Camp Kesson family for really being that home away from home during my time here at CU. I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy, and I hope to see some of you again soon. Hi everyone, I just want to say a huge thank you to all my friends, family, and professors. You guys were amazing, but specifically the two most amazing women in my life, my mom and my nana. I love you guys so much, and I wouldn't be where I am today without you. My next step is to start nursing school. 
And yeah, I'm off. Thanks to you. I want to thank my parents as well as both of my older sisters as they have been a constant support for me. and I could not have done this without them. I also want to thank Dr. Barger and Dr. Quant for allowing me to work in their labs. That has been a really awesome experience and I've learned invaluable skills there. Next year, I will continue my education pursuing my master's degree under the advisorship of Dr. Barger at CU here. And I have loved studying eBio and I'm really excited to see where it takes me in the future. Happy graduation, congrats everybody. I wanna thank everybody that's made the last four years so awesome. Thank you to Robbie, Amy, Luna, Aspen, um, my grandparents, all of my amazing friends, and especially my parents. Thank you guys so much for making everything possible. I love you all, and happy birthday, Amy. Hello, my name is Sabella, and I just wanted to thank all the faculty, friends, and family that have helped me on my journey here at CU Boulder. I feel like I have been so lucky to meet all the people that I did, and I just really wanted to thank my parents as well as my friends for all the support that they have provided me. My CU education has always been very important, and I have had so many unique and amazing experiences here during my undergraduate years, such as seeing wolves in Yellowstone to studying barn swallows. In the future, I want to pursue a PhD program, and I dream of being a wildlife biologist, so thank you. And now, recognizing all of the other students who finished this year, and there's over 140 of you. Congratulations. So you've seen a few videos submitted by students, and here's a list of all of you who've successfully graduated. And there are a lot. Congratulations to you all. And with that, I'd like to thank all of you for attending this virtual graduation. I'm so glad that you could be here. And please continue to keep in touch with us through a variety of different social media options. And I just want to say to all of you graduates and your friend and family, you've done it. And I wish you the best of luck in whatever direction your life takes. And I hope that everything that happens is wonderful and that you can take some of what you've learned in this department with you to help you on the next paths that you're going to take. Thank you very much and have a wonderful uh, rest of the summer. <laughs>